Hello, and welcome to another edition of NIMS & Associates Acumatica Snapshots. Today, we're going to be covering some of the basics of branch accounting, which sometimes we call a multidimensional accounting. So we're going to talk about what is branch accounting, elements of branch accounting, what the benefits of branch accounting are, and what the requirements are if we are going to use branch requirements. So what is branch accounting? So setting up branches in Acumatica means that we're setting up financial entities underneath a tenant in Acumatica. A tenant in Acumatica is what you log into. When you put in your credentials, user code and password, you're logging into a tenant. Now that tenant might have multiple companies set up under them or multiple locations or business entities or financial entities underneath that tenant. Those are, would be called branches. So branches allow for multiple companies to be set up under a single tenant in Acumatica. A company, divisions, subsidiaries can be arranged in kind of a hierarchical structure that allows for really easy financial consolidations. It allows for do-to and do-from accounting. When tenants have branches that are set up for balancing, so debits equal credits within the branch, and if transactions happen between branches, well, the system needs to do a do-to, do-from for accounting purposes. It allows, as I mentioned, for fast and easy financial reporting consolidations. It allows for really super slick sub-module reporting. So for instance, in receivables or payables or in inventory, you can get those valuations by branch or as for the whole company, so pretty good. I like to think of three different scenarios when talking about setting up branches in Acumatica. Centralized accounting, uh, what I call autonomous branches, and autonomous with multiple locations. So centralized accounting means that we log into an entity, B1, and there are two branches, both posting to the same ledger. Now, in this case, those B2 and B3 could be self-balancing, or they don't have to be self-balancing. But in either case, it's a simple hierarchy of, of how a branch would, would work. Autonomous branches mean that they are completely separate entities for financial purposes. You'll see as we get on through the slideshow that there are, you know, they share some things like a chart of accounts and some vendors and customers and things like that. But for all intents and purposes, for a financial basis, that they're completely separate. Autonomous and multi-location means that we're setting up two companies within one tenant, and B1 and B4, and underneath each one of those companies, we have self-balancing ledgers. And that allows us to really, in a super cool way, roll up financial information for financial statements. Elements of branch accounting. The tenants are the financial entity that a user logs into. So when accessing Acumatica, they provide a user code and password. That's the tenant that you would log into. A company is a financial entity underneath the tenant. There could be multiple companies underneath the tenant. A branch could be a sub-financial entity to a company. So once in a company, you could have multiple branches. Those branches could be self-balancing or not. A ledger is a set of self-balancing books that transactions are posted to. In Acumatica, you set up ledgers for uh, different reasons, but typically there's an actual ledger for actual transactions. There's a budget ledger for budgeted transactions, and there could be multiple budgeted you know, ledgers. Sometimes, depending on the situation with the configuration of companies and branches, we might have multiple ledgers, multiple actual ledgers, that companies and branches report to. Accounts are what transactions are supposed to do. It's your, your typical chart of accounts. Subaccounts is a further dimensional breakdown of a transaction. So think departments. So the benefits of branch accounting really break down into the financial organization of a company. So in a situation where companies are doing transactions between related entities, Acumatic can actually do and track the company do to and do from. So if branches are set up as separate companies, 
Acumatic will perform the due to and due from transactions between the two branches or multiple branches. If we're using branch accounting, we can do fast and easy financial consolidations as well, right within the standard Acumatica financial report writer. Easily accepts the ability to consolidate financial data. There's no need to add vendors and customers and inventory items to each branch when you're using branch accounting. Acumatica assumes that in a branch accounting scenario that vendors, customers, inventory items, and the chart of accounts, for that matter, are shared amongst the branches. Financial transactions and budgets are completely separate. However, vendors and customers and inventory items and the chart of accounts are shared between branches. Now, that's not to say that we can't provide row level security to hide certain customers, vendors, inventory items from other branches. So keep that in mind. Although they share customers and branches, low level security can hide things from branches that shouldn't be seeing them. So the requirements of using branches in Acumatica, all entities must use the same chart of account format. I didn't say the same chart of accounts, I said the same chart of account format. And that's because for the most part, they will be using the same chart of account, but certain accounts are going to be hidden from branches. For example, you don't want a cash account that's unique to a particular company or branch to be shared with other companies and branches. They're going to be hidden. Vendors, customers, and items are initially shared by all branches, but can be hidden. Each branch must have the same fiscal start and end date. Now to show you some of the benefits of using branches in Acumatica. I've logged into a tenant here in uh, Acumatica. Now to see the branches that are related to the tenant, I can click on this down arrow and it shows me that I've got one, two, three, four, five branches set up, which are three companies and four branches, including the tenant. I can switch between companies and branches easily enough. As you can see that the dashboards can be branch sensitive as well. Branches are set up in configuration under organization. Typically under the concept of branches, you've got companies and branches. Let's look at companies. So I've got three companies set up. When a company is set up in a tenant in Acumatica, there's a certain type to a company. So this is a company called Products. And it's expected that there's going to be branches within that that require balancing. So the company types are a company that with no branches underneath it. It could be that there's branches that don't require balancing. And really what that's saying is no intercompany transactions between branches. Or it could be branches that require balancing, meaning the debits and credits that are posted to each branch equal. And if there are transactions between branches, Acumatico, using configurations that are previously established, will do due to and do from transactions. Under branches, these are branches that belong to companies. So if we looked at product detail, you can see that product detail belongs to a company called Products. If we looked at product wholesale, you can see that product wholesale belongs to Products as well. The hierarchy there is there's a company called Products that has two separate branches underneath them for financial reporting, and those branches report to that company. Each branch in Acumatica can be a separate legal entity. You can see that there are fields for tax registration IDs. They can also be separate 1099 reporting entities. Acumatica has the ability, when producing 1099s, to keep branch level 1099 information separate for 1099 reporting purposes. Very cool feature. When entering transactions in a company that's configured for branches, you start the transaction per normal. At the top of the screen, the system will show you what branch you're currently in, you're currently in products retail. I wanted to switch to products wholesale, I would click here. The system then assumes that this transaction is going to be entered for the branch products wholesale. Now, putting in a transaction, 
you can see that there's a column in the details section that's pre-filled out with the same products wholesale that you see at the top of the screen. So I can put in a transaction as normal. But I could also put in a portion of this invoice that could go to another branch. So Acumatica in this sense is allowing me to put in an AP invoice to one branch and portion of that invoice to another branch. Now what's gonna happen with that, this transaction, is that since the transaction was put into the product's wholesale branch, by virtue of the fact that I'm actually in that branch, the credit for accounts payable for the amount of 15,000 is going to be going to the AP account for products wholesale. The system's going to be posting expenses to each of these branches and to each of these accounts and sub-accounts for these dollar amounts. Now, what's gonna happen though, is that the system is gonna know that products wholesale and product retail are branches that are set up for self-balancing. In other words, they're, they're branches that require debits to equal credits. And the system will say, in that scenario, debits will not equal credits. What am I to do? Well, the system will post due to, due from accounts to make it all work out. We look at the journal entry for this AP invoice that was just posted. You can see that the system has spawned due to due from accounts to make the entire journal entry balance. The journal entry for each branch is absolutely kept in balance by Acumatica, and it's recorded the fact that one branch owes the other branch money at this point. Standard reports in Acumatica reflect branches in a, a very good way. So if we look at, for example, accounts payable, and we look at some of the uh, standard reports that come with the system, so for example, the AP aging, you can see that we can run this for a single branch at a time. So if I wanted to see the AP aging just for a single branch, I would just run it. Now, in this case, I'm running for product wholesale. If you wanted to, though, you could change which branch you're running the, the report for. Or you could say, you know, really, I want to see the entire structure at one time, in which case I would zero out the company branch. And the system is going to be showing me all branches on one report. So for companies that are trying to do consolidated accounting functions, it's a very, very good feature. That feature applies itself to payables, applies itself to accounts receivable applies itself to inventory and to cash management. For financial reporting, Acumatica supports the concept of consolidating branches or cross branches in its standard report writer. In its standard report writer, on any report, you can tell the system what should roll into certain lines on a report. So if I'm looking at a row set, I can tell the system that on a particular line, only a certain branch should show up. Or in a certain column, only a certain branch should show up. More than likely, the better way to do it is to employ and utilize the concept of unit sets in financial reporting. Unit sets allow for a hierarchy amongst branches to be deployed. So you can see that in this unit set, I have set up a relationship between products and services in which branches report to which company. When running the report, because I've utilized the unit set concept, I can click here on this tree that exposes groups. And I can, with a click, show different results for different branches. I wanted to see the entire consolidation the financial results. I can click on the consolidated report. Otherwise, I can click on individual companies and branches and see the financial reports. 
I hope you have enjoyed this snapshot. For more information about other snapshots that we've done, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information about NIMS and Associates and Acumatica, please contact Henry Kim. Thank you.